I'm sure many of you were seeing this little head right here. So I thought I would go down and show you the rest of the t-shirt. So, yeah, it's not like all of a sudden I've become a Bin Laden fan. Not that I think anyone who I've had any communications with would actually think that. I did want to talk about how even the media and liberals, Democrats, are banging the war drones. Boom, 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 boom. Talking about going to war against ISIS. We need to react strongly against them. Blah, blah, blah. Why? Because two, two reporters have been beheaded. I know that sounds really cold and just adds to how cold it is. But honestly, two people? You want to go to war over two people? Why? Why all of a sudden has your attitude changed? It, it's so hypocritical because it has affected you, your sense of security, your higher BS morals that now you're going to demand, well, they are affecting freedom of the press. We need to go to war and show those ISIS people you can't stop the American press. You're not press, you're propaganda. You're left-wing BS propaganda. Don't even try to try. Give me your higher moral standards. Freedom of press does not apply outside of the USA. And you cannot hide behind your U.S. citizenship when you are trying to destroy the USA. So I'm just completely disgusted by all you left-wing scumbags that want us, those of us on the right, to fight your battles. You're nothing more than just useless cowards. You want to fight this war? Fine. You go ahead and form a liberal army. And we'll gladly, we'll, we'll back you. Since we're paying all the bills too. We'll back you, we'll train you, we'll supply you, and then we'll send you over there and let you fight this war. See how you do. You liberals. Trust me. Those of us on the right know how to fight a war. Well. Many of us on the right I'm not going to try to defend people like McCain and Graham who tend to just, I don't know, I think that they try to use the U.S. military as their Viagra, to be honest. And I'm really tired of the U.S. military being used for a police force. They're not a police force. If we go to war, I want it to be a damn war. No more of this police action. No more of this nation building. Be like World War II. You go in, you kick the living shit out of the enemy. Then you help them rebuild. That's what we did with Germany and with Japan. And 70 years later... They're some of our best friends in the, in the, on the entire planet. And they were rebuilt under a military government. Quit tying the hands of the U.S. military. If you want them to go to war, fine. We do a declaration of war. We have achievable goals of destroying the enemy, winning the war. And then we attempt to make sure that we build a country that will be our ally, that will be a friend, not a country that we will have to come back again in our 20, 30 years and kick the hell out of them again. Because if that's going to be the case, well, we may as well just go ahead and wipe out everyone in whatever country we declare war on. Because, as Thomas Paine said, 
If there is to be trouble, let it be in my time, rather so that my child may know peace. And that's actually a much longer quote from Common Sense. I noticed that the first time I ever read Common Sense, Thomas Paine told the story, whether it's a parable or a true story, I'm not really sure. But he told the story of, he was in a pub. Now you have to remember that pubs were the meeting places during the Revolutionary Era. He was in a pub, and he saw a man come walking into the pub. And the man had a child with him. And the man was whining and crying, Oh, why does there have to be war? Why does there have to be trouble? Why, why, why? And that was where Thomas Paine came up with the parable. If there is trouble, let it be in my time, so my child may know no peace. Because it was selfish of this person to demand and want peace during his time, even though that would multiply the trouble in the future for his own child. Because any problem that you do not deal with as soon as possible will become a greater problem in the future. Very few problems work themselves out. You have to meet problems head on. You can't just hope that they will go away. Now you have to prioritize your problems and deal with them as you are able to in a realistic manner. So, I'm completely disgusted by the left. I'm tired of us having to fight wars with our hands tied behind our backs. I'm tired for of the US military being used as an international police force. The military is proficient in two things. Killing people and breaking things. If you are not going to ask them to do one of the two, then you let them stay home and practice doing both of them. So, as for dealing with ISIS, over two people? No. Over the threat that they face the United States in the future? That's a different argument. But as I said, declaration of war and go in there to kick the living shit out of them. But there's also a problem with that argument and that logic. And that is, the war hawks of either party and the media like to turn around and say, the United States is the only country that can deal with ISIS. Really? I don't think so. Turkey is right on the border of both Iraq and Syria. Turkey has one of the largest militaries in NATO. Turkey could handle ISIS very well on their own. The Kurds, who we should have been supporting instead of playing politics between the Sunnis and the Shias, who are afraid of the Kurds seeking revenge. And also you have the Turks, who are afraid of the Kurds trying to reform Kurdistan, and since there are Kurds in Turkey, and there is a question of Turkish territory that the Kurds may demand or expect for a Kurdistan, that we basically ignored the Kurds. We need to support the Kurds. We need to look at our national interests, not the interests of these other nations that are weaker than us. We need to worry about our national interest. And as for NATO, I think I'm going to do a separate video on that since Prime Minister Cameron was nice enough to bring up the subject today. Iran could deal with ISIS. They could. They're a threat too. They're a threat to Iran too because... Iran is just not hardcore enough to make ISIS happy. Iran is too much of a modern nation state to make ISIS happy. Israel could kick the living shit out of 
that uh, ISIS. ISIS has said they want Mecca. So the Saudis may have to actually use their military to defend their own country. <gasps> Shocking. Shocking that any nation in that area should have to defend their own national borders. Another thing about this that really bugs the shit out of me. The left, the media, is beating their war drums because two, I, I can't just get over this, two, two people were killed. This happened just this year, except if I remember correctly, it was three. Israel and Hamas have been banging heads and Israel attacked Hamas in the Gaza Strip over the killing of three teenagers. If I remember correctly, that was the spark that escalated the situation in the Gaza Strip between Israel and Hamas. And yet, the media, the left-wing war hawk media, was crying about the poor, innocent Palestinians and the peaceful, loving Hamas terrorists. People, before you fall for the propaganda of these idiots in the left-wing media, think about their agenda. I'm not going to fight the media's battles just because their feelings are hurt. Just some food for thought. Much love to all of you on the right. And to all of you on the left, much hate.